So every time we learn how to use technology to solve societal problems, we unlock new opportunities. And whenever we unlock new opportunities, we open up our society for growth and development. If I was to read off in mind some of the problems um, affecting education, especially in Nigeria, I'll probably read off um, inequitable distribution of good schools, inequitable distribution of good teachers, updated curriculum, um, socioeconomic problems, socioeconomic problems like insecurity, and so on and so forth. But the thing is, We've learned how to use technology to solve some of these problems and we are unlocking new opportunities. And by we, I mean the educational technology industry in Nigeria or the ed tech industry for short. And in the next couple of minutes, I'll try to show some of the ed tech solutions that are currently on the ground and how they are unlocking new opportunities Nigerians and Nigeria as a whole. Think about this. What if it were possible for us to democratize education? What if it were possible for us to democratize education? What if it were possible for us to bring great teachers together, pull all, go throughout the country, find the best teachers we can find? Bring them together, ask them to create an academic content that is so good and can be accessed by every single learner irrespective of where they are in the country. Well, it is possible. And that is what EdTech solutions like ULESSON, Savvy Teach, and EDIPRO have done. With these solutions, it is possible for a child in Okini, in Ida, to access quality academic content from a teacher hundreds of kilometers away, maybe in just, maybe in Rio. But it doesn't end there. What if, okay, maybe as a parent, you want that physical learning experience for your child? You want that one-to-one -one teacher experience, not physical learning experience. Well, with solutions like Superprof, please go to the next slide, please. The next one. Thank you. With solutions like Superprof and Tutoria, they've leveraged technology, and it is now possible for you to stay in your home, call on a teacher, very good teacher that to come to your house for a case to relish that physical learning experience. But still doesn't end there, you might want to ask a question. All the solutions are listed are all for profit. I mean you need to pay for it, they're not free. What about those people that are of low income um, status, people in low income communities? Well with solutions like Teach for Nigeria delivery technology to pull together great teachers that they possibly can find and then send them down to those communities okay, to teach in schools so that learners can make use of their expertise. But of course the school system doesn't start and stop um, around involved just around learning. There's still more the school administration. Excellent please. EdVets is another Nigerian ethics solution that has digitized the lengths and breadth of school administration. Talk about the school payment, talk about class management, talk about staff management, talk about um, creating assessments, printing our results. It digitized the lengths and breadth of school administration. And thankfully enough, next one please, Takeria Institute is doing a very great job for career folks. So, as a career person, you can be in the comfort of your office or in the comfort of your room and access career advancement education, quality career advancement education. 
But this what Allah said, there are three questions. Three very important questions. First one is, if Etzai is solving Lena problems, then what will happen to the future of schools? Or what will be the future of schools? There are several answers to this. People, experts have varying answers. That's fine. But for me, my answer is yes, schools will still exist in the nearby future. Of course, for these reasons. First, is that for me, education transcends beyond just learning academic concepts. It goes beyond that. Two, I see ethic as a complementary solution okay, towards ensuring continuous learning and development. What do I mean? Some months ago, last year, we couldn't leave our houses. We couldn't go anywhere. We were all at home. We had to be at home because of the time. But for most people, it looked like, I mean, um, so I can't learn anymore, or I can't teach kids anymore, what does this imply? But thankfully enough, EdTech came into the picture and has ensured, or did ensure, that we had continuous learning and development. And of course, some of the basic tools, like Google Docs, Google Forms, um, Google Slides, and so on, are very instrumental in driving um, free resources or free tools that teach us leverage to ensure that learning continues. And of course, for me, the best EdTech solution will be one that actually really drives learning the attainment of learning goals. So essentially, EdTech complements the traditional brick and mortar schooling. But what it does in addition is that it doesn't limit it to that order. It doesn't limit it to the four walls of the school. It gives you that power to attain quality education beyond those borders. Now, second question. So, aside from solving educational problems, aside from solving academic problems, why else should we care about EdTech? Well, I'll tell you why. Let's go back up. I think you might have scrolled far down. Go up, please. Great. So, EdTech alone, as of this moment, has attracted over 10 million US dollars investment into Nigeria from the world's biggest investors in education. Talk about Al Ventures and talk about Tiacon Capital. And more has to come because EdTech is the future. It's going to stay, schools are going to stay, but EdTech will definitely be stay because it's going to transcend them beyond the four quarters of the school. Second, well, thank you. Startups. I've mentioned eight startups. We have employed several professionals. Think about teachers. Think about consultants. Think about media personnel. Think about product developers. Think about programmers. Think about consultants. Think about um, finance people, administrative people, and all of the other important folks that they should have it, that work very hard to ensure that you can attain quality learning experience from the comforts of wherever you are. Third, there is room for growth. There is a very wide room for growth. And what's that room? Of all the solutions I listed, I didn't list the solution that prioritizes teacher training. Teachers are the backbone of EdTech and it will continue to remain so for the life, full life cycle of EdTech for as long as EdTech exists. So I'm building up a solution, excuse me, that will prioritize teacher education, teacher training, teacher development, because again, teachers are the foundation, the backbone of better, and will continue to be so. Of course, we are just using technology to deliver that particular, that, that great, awesome, incredible learning experience. But the core of it is education. The core of it is learning. 
attain some particular set of learning outcomes, some learning goals. And then the third and final question um, that I have to answer here is, where are we all coming? Where are we coming? I mean, of course, we now understand that there's an opportunity. We understand its importance. We understand what it has done. We understand where it is going to and how it's going to get there. But how exactly do we come in? Where do you and I come in? Well, stay here, our leaders. Sit here, our professionals. Sit here, our investors. Sit here, our learners. Sit here, our teachers. Sit here, our parents. Sit here, our educational consultants. Sit here, our school leaders. And of course, influencers. So all we need to do is to come together to create a viable ecosystem for EdTech to thrive. Why? If EdTech thrives, we will keep on unlocking new opportunities. And if we keep on unlocking new opportunities, we will open our country, we will open our society for more growth and development. So, the EdTech movement has begun. The question is, what 